Welcome back everyone, another episode here on Eat Sleep Brief. Today is January 7th. As you guys can see, the quarantine was complete on January 5th. I was actually gone for about a week's time. Uh, long story short, we had our second baby. You guys know how that goes. So both the main display suffered a little bit of negligence on my part and the quarantine might have suffered also a little bit. I'll get into that here. The good news is we are done. We're kind of on the watching period right now. I did notice something that I think I, I talked about in the previous video. The yellow eye cold tang started getting something very interesting. You can kind of see it on the top dorsal, but it was very weird. It wasn't, um, I knew it wasn't ick or velvet or flukes, anything like that. Why? Because this tank has had copper for actually over 30 days. It's had general cure. So I was almost positive it wasn't that. So I wasn't too worried about it. In doing more research, asking Ocean Devotion, they actually supplied um, all the fish but the uh, coltang. So the cell fin, the fox, and the blue I bought from them. Uh, but I let him know, obviously they quarantine fish. I said, have you seen anything like this? And uh, he got back to me and he started throwing some stuff at me. And one thing he mentioned, he's like, if you've treated your tank with copper, I doubt it's velvet or bro and, you know anything like that. He threw out something, I'll be honest, I've never in my life heard of. And it was called cauliflower. I was like, what the heck is call? I, I didn't even know that existed. I'll be honest with you. I was like, wait, no, there's no way it's call. I mean, first of all, what is it? And I doubt it is that. So I did a little bit of research. I saw it. And sure enough, as soon as I saw the first picture, I was like, uh, yeah, I think my fish has that. So the easiest way to determine cauliflower, it kind of looks like a spot, except it starts bulging out. Generally, a parasite will, will be on the fish's fins, and it'll be pretty flush. It won't really be growing outwards. Where cauliflower, if you let it get really bad, start bulging out is the main way you actually are able to see it. They're a little bit scared. They're not used to having a camera here. But in my research, I did quite a bit of reading and quite a bit of uh, figuring out how bad is it and how to get rid of it. Believe it or not, there actually really isn't a cure. You can go ahead and pick it off. It may come out again. The best cure is to have pristine water quality and feed the fish vitamins and it'll go away. The best analogy I heard, it's a lot like humans and herpes. It's something you can live with. It's something that goes away, but if something triggers it, it'll obviously come back. Ocean Devotion mentioned to me is like, dude, if I were you, I'd check your water quality. And I mentioned to him, I said, my ammonia has been pristine. I've tested ammonia almost every week and it's nothing in there. And obviously we all know ammonia doesn't mean you, if you don't have ammonia in the tank, doesn't mean you have pristine water quality. It just means you have a well cycled tank, right? Uh, the main reason I haven't done tests with nitrate is you guys are wondering why weren't you testing nitrate? Because I wasn't, was I didn't want to contaminate my test kits. If you guys know, anytime you have copper, you do not want to mix your uh, test kits, your vials, anything like that. Because uh, if you contaminate your main display, I'm sure you can get it out. There's quite a few products out there you can get copper out, but I don't want to introduce it, right? Why, why even do that? So for you guys wondering why I never performed a nitrate test kit, it's not because I don't have the test, just kind of, I was too afraid to contaminate it. Sure enough, today I actually, he tells me, you know what, dude, just do a quick test on nitrate, see what it's at, and let me know. I mean, here, I won't tell you about it. How about we go check it out? Here is the nitrate test, and sure enough, after doing my research, cauliflower is commonly found when water quality is really bad. I'll be the first to raise my hand and accept full responsibility for this. I performed two water changes, mainly to remove the general cure. And there, I tested ammonia throughout almost every week. There was never an ammonia spike whatsoever, but nitrates for sure were coming up. So only because you have no ammonia doesn't mean you have pristine water. As we know, that was, I guess, uh, 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 my mistake. I mean, we really don't even need to get close to this. Um, I don't want to get too close to it because I don't want to contaminate the whole test kit. I grabbed this with my hands and I was grabbing the tank that obviously has copper. I didn't use this syringe. I used a separate one and obviously I didn't use anything here. I made sure none of this made contact with the cup and I washed my hands in between of everything so I don't contaminate this nitrate test kit. To be honest with you, that's the main reason I didn't do a test of nitrate. You guys are probably saying, why didn't you perform these tests? Well, I didn't want to contaminate it. And I really never gave it thought of how I don't, how I won't contaminate it till today. But sure enough, nitrate is well over 100. I mean, this thing only goes up to 100 and I don't even need to get close to that. So I think we found the culprit. So you're probably saying, so what happens now? What do you do? 
Well, from my research, I've done, uh, Humblefish has done a, a, not a write-up, but he's replied to a few people, I forget what forum it was, where they were asking, what can I do to treat cauliflower disease in fish? The good thing I picked up, not only from him, but other sources, it's not something that's going to kill your fish. It's not something that's going to contaminate every single fish. Uh, so he mentioned, it's not something you worry too much about. Once you maintain pristine water quality and feed the fish vitamins, it'll go away. I guess the best analogy he used, it's a lot like humans and herpes. Sad to say, but a lot of people have, I think it's called genital herpes. I don't know the exact terms. Again, it's not something I deal with. It's like humans and herpes. You're not going to die from it. It's not crazy. You know, it's nothing too much to worry about. I mean, it's nothing great to have, but you know, it's nothing too crazy. So I guess the plan now is going to be to observe the fish for a few days. And you could see on the coal, it, it for sure is cauliflower. And one of the main ways I mentioned earlier that you could tell it's cauliflower, typically ick or velvet or any other of the parasites we deal with are, are almost flush to the skin of the fish, where cauliflower starts to bulge out, if you will. And if you give it enough time and if it's bad enough, it'll get like a big tumor. Some people say don't pick it off. You can injure the fish unless it's, it's in a location where, let's say on the gills or near the eye where it is irritating the fish. They recommend just leave it on, give the fish some vitamins, and it should go away. Honestly, what I want to do is get them in as soon as possible into the main display, which for I know for a fact has pristine water quality. Uh, get them some vitamins, start feeding them varieties of food, getting Cellcon is a good recommendation to, to make the cauliflower go away. So I think that's my plan. I'll probably look at them a little bit longer here in this tank. Once that's done, I'll surely go and transfer them out. And that's gonna be the plan. Hopefully it does go away. I feel pretty confident in the ick, velvet, flukes, all that's totally gone out of the tank. I'm honestly not worried about it, which is why I feel so comfortable doing that. So I really think that's gonna be the course of action I'm gonna take. Certainly though, I would like to hear from you guys if you've ever experienced something like this. I guess it, it wouldn't be common in the main display because if your water quality is that bad, your corals and your tank is gonna be suffering with algae issues and so many other problems. I think it's a lot more prone in the small quarantine system like this. Why? Because, you know, just the nature of it. There's a lot of fish, small water volume, medication, uh, so on and so forth. So I'm not surprised it came in this tank. Like I said, this is my first time quarantined. I'd never done it. I really never thought it would get to this level, but hey, now we know, lesson learned, and I'm for sure not gonna be making this mistake again. So if you guys are wondering, how can I make sure that this problem doesn't replicate? Very simple. Make sure you're testing not only your ammonia, but your nitrates as well. Make sure you maintain pristine water quality. Uh, I only did two water changes in the system and it was only to go off the directions of general cure and get the medication out of the water. I should have been doing it more. I probably should have been doing one to two of them a week at the minimum. But like I said, lesson learned, you can guarantee it's not gonna happen again. And if you're in a scenario that you wanna quarantine or wondering what you can do to prevent this, just do your water changes. Very simple and straightforward. So if there's any video that I've ever made out there where I really want you guys to learn from my mistake, it's gonna be this one. Make sure if you do have a quarantine and you're doing as I'm doing, make sure you're testing for nitrates, not only ammonia, to make sure that your fish don't come out with something like the cauliflower. Also something I researched, I guess the cauliflower lives within the fish, again, just like humans and herpes, it's something that's always in your system. So same with the fish. Um, there's there's no way you can eradicate it. It's always gonna be in there. And I believe the fish probably came with it from the wild, just the excess nutrients in the water column really made it you know, spore out, if you will. So guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. I'd really, really want to hear if you guys have ever experienced something similar, how did you take care of it? More importantly, what are your thoughts and your takeaways from this video? If you guys did stay to the very end to watch this video, please let me know down in the comment box below. I'd love to see and chat with all you guys that always stay till the very end. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate you. On top of that, we just reached 26,000 followers, guys, on YouTube. I'll be honest with you, when I first started my JBJ, I would have never, ever imagined I would have gotten here. You know, the whole reason I started my channel was just to share my first adventure with the reef tank. I'd never done it. I'd never even kept fresh water, salt water, and I said, you know what? Let's just record it. It was mainly for me to see how well I was doing over time and to see how the corals were growing, but it really grew a lot bigger than I ever imagined. 
And honestly, guys, it couldn't have been without each and every one of you that have been a part. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Enough blabbering. Be sure to not miss this Sunday's video. We're going to be adding coral to the main display, so you for sure do not want to miss it. And that's going to be it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. More importantly, I hope you guys had a great takeaway so you certainly don't make the mistake I made. That's going to be it, guys. I thank each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.